Rocks that hold gold, identification guide. 1. Introduction, why knowing gold-bearing rocks matters. Understanding which rocks are likely to contain gold is a foundational skill for anyone involved in mineral exploration, geology, or recreational prospecting. While gold is a rare and valuable metal, it does not typically occur in pure or visible form across most landscapes. Instead, it is usually embedded within particular host rocks, associated with specific geological conditions and processes. Recognizing gold-bearing rocks allows field geologists and prospectors to target their efforts effectively. Rather than randomly searching large areas, identifying geological patterns and mineral indicators can lead directly to potential gold deposits. This skill not only saves time and money but also increases the success rate of exploration activities. Whether the goal is scientific research, commercial mining, or hobby-level gold panning, the ability to spot the right rocks in the field is a major advantage. 2. Common Gold-Bearing Rock Types Quartz Veins Quartz is perhaps the most commonly recognized host for gold. Gold-bearing quartz veins are formed when hydrothermal fluids rich in silica and other minerals move through rock fractures. As the fluid cools and pressure drops, quartz and gold precipitate out and crystallize within the fissures. These veins may appear as thin stringers or massive white streaks cutting across the host rock. In many mining districts, quartz veins have historically been the primary source of high-grade gold ore. Occasionally, visible flakes or specks of gold can be observed within quartz, although this is rare and usually only occurs in particularly rich samples. Schist and Gneiss These foliated metamorphic rocks commonly form in regions that have undergone significant tectonic stress and heat. Gold is often associated with zones of shearing and foliation within schists and gneisses. The layering and mineral alignment in these rocks can guide hydrothermal fluids, allowing gold to concentrate in thin seams or disseminated throughout the rock matrix. Minerals such as biotite, muscovite, and garnet are often present and may indicate a favorable metamorphic environment for gold mineralization. Greenstone Belts Greenstone belts are ancient volcanic sedimentary sequences that have been metamorphosed to low to medium grade. Found on stable cratons around the world, these belts often host gold deposits that are among the oldest and most prolific. The greenish hue comes from minerals like chlorite, epidote, and actinolite. Gold typically occurs in quartz carbonate veins within the volcanic rocks, often along fault zones or in zones of intense alteration. These belts are the source of some of the largest gold-producing areas in Australia, Canada, and Africa. Serpentinite and Ultramafic Rocks Serpentinite is formed through the hydration and metamorphism of ultramafic rocks like peridotite and dunite. These rocks originate deep within the Earth's mantle and are rich in magnesium and iron. Although not the most common hosts for gold, serpentinites can contain gold in association with chromite, magnetite, and talc. These rocks are significant in certain tectonic settings, especially near subduction zones or in ophiolite complexes. Their alteration zones, especially where they interact with faults, may act as conduits for gold-bearing fluids. Banded Iron Formations, BFs BFs consist of alternating layers of iron-rich minerals, such as magnetite or hematite, and silica-rich material like chert. These Precambrian rocks were deposited in ancient marine environments and have been associated with significant gold deposits, particularly in areas where they have undergone structural deformation or metamorphism. In places like the Homestake Mine in South Dakota, BFs have yielded millions of ounces of gold. Gold in these formations often occurs with sulfide minerals or in zones of silicification. 3. Visual Clues to Identify Gold in Rocks In the field, Certain visual clues can help geologists and prospectors identify rocks that may contain gold. The most obvious sign is the presence of quartz veins, especially when they appear as white to milky streaks cutting across darker host rocks. Quartz veins that are associated with iron staining, showing rusty reds, yellows, and browns, are particularly promising, as this suggests the oxidation of sulfide minerals which often accompany gold. Gold is sometimes visible to the naked eye, especially in high-grade samples. 
When present, it appears as soft, metallic yellow specks or flakes. It differs from fool's gold, pyrite, by its softness, malleability, and color tone. Pyrite is usually brighter and forms more geometric crystals, whereas gold tends to have a richer, buttery appearance and irregular shape. Other visual indicators include boxwork textures formed from weathered sulfide minerals, gossan, rusty oxidized caps above sulfide deposits, and manganese coatings which appear as dark, sooty residues on the rock surface. These surface features can point toward underlying gold mineralization. Rocks in proximity to faults, fractures, or hydrothermally altered zones also warrant closer inspection. 4. Tools you can use in the field. Field identification of gold-bearing rocks can be greatly enhanced by using a few key tools. A hand lens or loop, 10x magnification or greater, allows close-up examination of mineral grains and textures, which can reveal visible gold or associated indicator minerals. A rock hammer is essential for breaking open rock surfaces to expose fresh interiors where gold and quartz relationships may be clearer. A magnet is useful for identifying magnetic minerals like magnetite or pyrotite, which may occur with gold in certain environments. Streak plates help distinguish gold, no streak, from pyrite, greenish-black streak. Field hardness kits can test mineral resistance to scratching. Gold has a Mohs hardness of about 2.5 to 3, making it easily scratched by a knife. For detecting gold particles near the surface, a metal detector can be effective, especially in areas with coarse gold. However, it is less effective for detecting fine-grained gold inside quartz veins or deep within the rock. A notebook and GPS device are crucial for recording the exact location, orientation, and geological setting of any findings. 5. Where to look, geological settings. Gold forms in specific geological settings that concentrate the metal through fluid movement, pressure changes, and chemical reactions. One of the most prolific environments is orogenic belts, where mountain building processes create fractures, faults, and shear zones. These structures serve as pathways for mineral-rich fluids, which deposit gold and other minerals as they rise and cool. Ancient riverbeds, terraces, and alluvial fans can contain placer gold, which has been eroded from upstream hard rock sources. Over time, heavy gold particles accumulate in low-velocity areas such as bends, behind large rocks, or within gravels. These deposits can be mined using pans, sluices, or dredges. Fault zones are prime targets for gold exploration. The repeated movement along these faults causes crushing and fracturing of the host rocks, allowing fluids to flow and minerals to precipitate. Hydrothermal systems, especially those related to volcanic activity, often produce epithermal or mesothermal gold deposits. Alteration features like silicification, brecciation, and clay zones can indicate proximity to these systems. 6. Simple field tests to detect gold. Although laboratory analysis is the most accurate way to confirm gold presence, several simple field tests can provide helpful preliminary information. One of the most popular is gold panning, where crushed rock or sediment is washed to separate heavy minerals like gold from lighter materials. Gold, due to its high density, 19.3 G CM superscript 3, settles quickly at the bottom of the pan. Streak testing involves rubbing a mineral across an unglazed porcelain plate to observe the color of the streak. Real gold leaves no streak or a very faint yellow streak, while pyrite leaves a black-green streak. Acid testing, using diluted hydrochloric or nitric acid, can help differentiate gold from carbonates and sulfides, as gold is not affected by these acids, while pyrite may react. A specific gravity, density, test can also distinguish gold from other materials. By weighing a sample in air and water, one can calculate its density. Gold's density is much higher than that of pyrite, quartz, or other associated minerals. These tests are best used as screening tools before committing to professional assay services. 7. Mistakes to avoid. Many beginners make the mistake of assuming that every quartz vein contains gold. In reality, only a small percentage of quartz veins are mineralized. 
Another frequent error is mistaking pyrite or chalcopyrite for gold. While visually similar, these minerals differ in hardness, color, and density. Pyrite is brittle and will shatter under pressure, whereas gold is malleable and soft. Failing to consider the broader geological context is another major mistake. Gold does not occur randomly, it is found in zones where structural and chemical conditions allowed for its concentration. Overlooking surface features like iron staining or weathered sulfides can result in missed opportunities. Likewise, collecting samples without noting their exact location makes it impossible to return to a promising site or evaluate patterns later. 8. Case Studies Slash Examples In Western Australia, the Kalgoorlie Greenstone Belt has produced millions of ounces of gold from quartz carbonate veins hosted in volcanic rocks. These veins are often located along major faults and are associated with pyrite and arsenopyrite. In California, the Sierra Nevada Gold Belt is characterized by auriferous quartz veins in metamorphic rocks such as slate and schist. The Mother Lode region, in particular, yielded enormous gold quantities during the 19th century rush. South Africa's Witwaters Rand Basin contains ancient conglomerate rocks that hold some of the world's richest gold deposits. Here, gold is not in veins but finely disseminated within pebbly sediments deposited in a river delta over 2.7 billion years ago. In Canada's Abitibi Greenstone Belt, gold is found in load deposits hosted in volcanic rocks that have been altered by hydrothermal fluids. These deposits are often mined from narrow but extremely rich veins. 9. Final Tips for Amateur Prospectors Prospecting for gold requires more than luck, it demands preparation, observation, and patience. Before entering the field, review regional geological maps and mining records to identify promising zones. Focus on fault lines, riverbeds, and areas with a history of gold production. Always carry the right tools and take notes about each sample you collect. Pay attention to changes in rock color, texture, and mineral content. When in doubt, collect a sample and label it with precise location data for later lab analysis. Obtain proper permissions or permits before prospecting on private or government-owned land. Prioritize safety, bring enough water, let someone know where you're going, and avoid working alone in remote locations. 10. Conclusion, Summary and Call to Action Gold-bearing rocks can be identified through a combination of mineralogy, geology, and practical field observation. Recognizing quartz veins, greenstones, schists, and BAFs as potential hosts is essential. Learning to read the land, by spotting rust-stained rocks, using simple tools, and understanding the geological history, can dramatically increase the chance of success. For anyone serious about gold prospecting, Mastering these identification techniques is the first step toward discovery. For more in-depth guides and field demonstrations, be sure to explore the rest of our geology-focused content.